Welcome to Positive Thinking TV. God will wipe away your tears. God has promised to comfort you and will wipe away all your tears. How do I know? In Isaiah 61 3 it says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And in Isaiah 51 11, God reassured, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return, and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head, they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. God is and has been the same today, yesterday, and forever. In Malachi 3 6 he says, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. God does not change, he maintains even to date. What he says before, and what he says to one, he says to all. So the above scriptures are for all of you that are mourning in Zion. All that have shed tears in Zion in the past were eventually comforted by God. Your case cannot be different. God has come to comfort all you that mourn in Zion. Whatever may be the cause and reason for your tears. God has come to your rescue. The scripture is full of the accounts of those who have had to shed tears of weeping. But in the end, God comforted them by turning their crying into joy. We have examples like 1. Hannah, 1 Samuel 1 8-20 2. Elizabeth, Luke 1 5-80 3. The Elders, Revelation 5 2-20 And many others, too numerous to mention. If God can do it for them, yours is no big deal. He can and will also do it for you. Cheer up and weep no more. What he says to one he says to all. Mark 13 37. And what I say unto you I say unto all, watch. Though, God hadn't promised that life should be a bed of roses for all of his redeemed. But one thing he did promise us is that he would never leave nor abandon us. He promised to be there to deliver us and eventually turn our sorrows into joy. Jeremiah 31 13. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. While God wasn't promising that there will never be challenges but had this to say. In Isaiah 43 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. Here the Bible made it abundantly clear that Christians have no immunities against challenges. But one thing he assures believers is victory at the end. In other words, it is not unscriptural to be challenged. What is unscriptural is to be defeated at the end. The Bible is also replete with examples of people who were challenged, and they were later delivered and comforted. One common denominator of every believer's trials is ending in victory. For instance, Hannah. In 1 Samuel. 1 to 8. Then said Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? 1 Samuel. 1 to 9 to 11. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. 1 Samuel 1 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. 1 Samuel 1 19-20 And they rose up in the morning early, and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house to Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. So momentary challenges, tears, or mourning is never a sign of defeat or abandonment. So to any believers that mourn now, it is a precursor or a herald of a new season for you, the season of joy and gladness. In Psalms 35, 
The Bible says, For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So any believer who is mourning due to the challenges of life, I urge you by the faithfulness of God to take solace in God's word and his infallible promises of assurance of victory. Hebrews 10:23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Jesus speaking about adversities encouraged believers not to worry unduly as he had earned them the needed victory. John 16:33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Challenges and adversities are part of life, which I believe God allows for four purposes. 1. To train, strengthen and equip believers. 2. To allow believers to have a feel or taste of what the current system is like and could have been without him so that we may fully appreciate his grace and benevolence upon their lives. 3. To prove believers worthy and deserving of the glory that follows. And 4. For our learning or teaching believers dimensions or ways he wants them to know. Whichever. The good news is that challenges are not meant to kill us, and 2. It is just for a moment. The Bible made this clear in 2 Corinthians 4 17. When Apostle wrote, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. This Bible is simply saying here that challenges are simply to prove believers for the glory ahead. For every believer out there crying, God encourages you to be strong unmovable because your victory is sure. God is determined to wipe away your tears. Revelation 21-4 And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This refers to us, and we should take solace in it. For God, who calls you, is faithful, he will do this. 1 Thessalonians 5:24. We appreciate you watching this video till the end. Consider subscribing, so that you do not miss out on other exciting videos that we post every Wednesday and Saturday. Click on any of the videos you will see on the screen carefully handpicked for you to enjoy at the end of this video. We hope you like and drive value from this video. We love you.